You're listening to KEXP at 90.3 FM in Seattle, streaming live around the world at kexp.org. I'm Cheryl Waters. Laura Veers is with us in the studio today. Welcome. Hi, Cheryl. It's always so great to see you and even more exciting when you have a new record, The Lookout. So amazing. Thank you. Going to start us off with a couple songs from that one? I am. Thanks. Laura Veers live on KEXP. Scuttling claws have cleaned her hands Rising and falling In the whirlpool sand You, you who turn the wheel Your eyes are green and steel Consider Margaret Sands How the gulls cry How the sunlight fans Gliding above the bar So beautiful. That is Laura Veers live here in the KEXP studios, the new album called The Lookout. Starlight 
Laura Veers live in the KEXP studios performing songs from her new album, The Look At. Such a beautiful new record, Laura. Thank you, Cheryl. The songs are gorgeous and so vulnerable, and especially that song you just sang. Are, is, are there themes running through this record? I know in the past you said you've started records uh, thinking of a theme, but more and more lately you let the songs kind of take control and you see if a theme emerges and I'm wondering if some did in this record. Yeah, the, the theme of the lookout started coming through. Um, I noticed people up in the top of sailing ships looking out across the water and people like lightning rods on the roofs of buildings and actually the term the lookout came into a couple songs and when I reflected because I write many many songs for each record when I reflected on what was happening I saw it coming through and decided okay that's what this is about this is about me feeling like I need to look out for others people need to look out for me I feel vulnerable in this political climate that we're in our country feels very confused right now and I wanted to address that in the songwriting. You're pretty focused when it comes to songwriting. Can you talk a little bit about your process? Because it's like a job for it's you. It's my job. Yeah. yeah, I've been doing this 20 years, over 20, maybe 25. Got my start in Seattle, actually. And um, so I treat it as the job that I do when I'm not touring. And I write usually four hours in the morning, um, four days a week. I have young children. And so one of them's still in preschool. He'll be in kindergarten in the fall. So I'll be able to do five days a week in the morning. And I find that in the morning is the best time for me to write. And um, after a few hours, I'm, I'm done. I can't really focus beyond that. Uh, and so it's a great job actually for a, a parent of young children. You'd think like touring musician isn't, but I don't tour all that often, but songwriter is. You do write a lot of songs. I read in an interview that you read wrote over a hundred songs for this record. I did, record. But, but it's a it's a misnomer in a way because I'll write like five versions of one song in one session just to get as many options out there on the table as possible. Because sometimes I don't know whether the melody's right, whether the feel is right. The chords could change radically, so it's not like a hundred distinct songs. But yeah, so we went through many many files. My husband Tucker Martin is the producer, and he, we've worked together. This is our tenth album together, so he. Poor guy has to listen through all, all that, but he can um, he can tell within about thirty seconds. I think like radio people can tell too. Like this song is hitting me or not within thirty seconds, so he doesn't have to listen to all of them. You do the writing by yourself, and then it must be nice to have someone come in with fresh ears. I. Um, Absolutely love the Case Lang Veers record. And I read somewhere that that was the first time that you had actually co-written with anyone. Yeah. Is that true after yeah. all these years of making music? Yeah, I'd co-written a little bit with a friend, Annalisa Tornfelt in Seattle or in Portland for just maybe five songs just for fun. We never really did a whole lot with those. But yeah, it was a really big learning curve actually to sit down with people who I didn't know, who I admired from a young age and try to write music together. And, and there were days where it was very fallow and we didn't come up with anything like any other day writing songs or other days where it all flowed very easily and there were no conflicts. But it was it was up and down process. But I certainly learned a lot about how malleable songwriting can be and how you can start with one thing and bring in another person and plug in all new words, keep the same melody and have a new song that's co-written. And um, that was how we did a lot of it, actually. I would write stuff and bring stuff to the table, and then they would kind of bring in their own words or add a bridge from a different song and morph things around. And I think that's why I ended up writing so many songs for this new album, because I learned from them how changeable they are, and it doesn't need to be just one version. You can write many different things and find the one that's singing the most and speaking the most. The live shows for that album were incredible as well. Did you learn new things about uh, performing and touring? For sure, yeah. I mean, KD Lang is such a master of performance that uh, honestly I felt a bit intimidated to even be on the stage with her because she, is, she owns it so fully and I've always been a little scared and... Um, more more of a shoegazer type than the crooner down on one knee old school way that she performs. So I learned a lot and I definitely came into my own more, I think. And also Nico is such a strong singer that I, I think I learned to be more confident in my singing and sing out more and just own it more through that process. Since doing those shows, have you done enough of your own shows that you think you'll take that forward uh, for Laura Veers? I mean, I... I don't think I'll ever be in the old school crooner <laughs> realm, um, but I do notice myself feeling more comfortable and just in my own skin. And I think that that, that process of working with them gave me more confidence, which is a lot of what I think helps performers. 
And I think that amps up the enjoyable level as yeah, well. It you does. You can relax on a certain level. Yes. You, um, as you said, have been doing this for a very long time, a couple of decades, and you work with your husband in the studio, which must just be a real treat to have someone that you trust um, helping you out. How do you keep it fresh and come up with new ideas and find that you're, you know, you're just so talented and, and you, you write these beautiful songs and you could just keep writing sort of the same songs over and over with different lyrics and think a lot of people would be happy, but that, that would probably get old for you. Yeah, no artist wants to repeat themselves and every artist wants to feel like they're growing and changing and being surprised. And I think at this stage in, in people's careers, it can start to be a challenge. How do I surprise myself? How do I stay alive and, and um, uh, <clears throat> feeling like I'm moving forward? Because who wants to move or repeat themselves and do the same thing that they've done? So one way that I did work around that issue is I made up a system of cards where I would draw from three different piles each day. And the first pile was a lyric card with a prompt telling me what I had to write about. And then the next card was a music card. And then the next card was an inspiration card. So um, like the inspiration might be like, see it through. Because I think a lot of times at the stage two, I can start to feel like, oh, I just don't want to do this. This is really hard. I don't know how to do this. Or I've done this so long, I don't know what to do. So see it through. And then the music card might say, like, write in a new time signature or change the tuning on your instrument. And then the lyric card might say, write from the obituaries. Today's obituary. And so I th that structure and restriction really helped to give me a format to write. And I did that project twice. It was 20 cards of each one. So I wrote 40 new songs that way. And actually, a lot of those came into this record. That's very interesting. That sounds like a creative process. You also had another creative outlet this past year. You started a podcast. I did. And tell us a little bit about that. I was feeling isolated as a parent musician. Uh, I don't know that many people who tour and have young children, and, and I wanted to talk with them about how they sort out some of the complexities of the decisions that we have to make as people who have to travel for work and have young children. Do you bring them with you? Do you leave them at home? How much do you tour? Why do you tour? And um, do you have to for your income or do you have other income streams? And it was really interesting. I did a season, the podcast is called Midnight Lightning and I did one season of 14, actually 15 interviews with musician moms. And um, I hope to do it again, but again, it's a lot for me to juggle with also trying to do my music career. So I, I am not committed to doing another season, but I want to do 14 Dads because I think it's important to talk to men about how they juggle it also. Because I think a lot of times people are just like, ah, oh, some other person's taking care of his children. You know, they don't really... Um, I think the bar is a little bit set lower for men, but I know a lot of men who really struggle with it too and try to figure out how they're going to juggle their lives as touring musicians. So I want to do it, but again, it's just so many things I'm trying to do that I don't know which one to, is, to really focus on because I have limited energy. Yeah, and you have a children's record and a children's book, so uh, and then raising two beautiful children, so you are very busy. But I imagine that podcast is so interesting for people because in this changing musical landscape, touring is really a must mm -hmm. for musicians now mm -hmm. if they want to make a living at it. Yep, it really is. You know, And I've seen that at the merch table, like... People aren't buying, I mean, I don't buy CDs nearly as much as I used, certainly not CDs, and sometimes I buy less vinyl than I used to buy, and I see that at the table, but they'll buy the book, because I wrote a book about Elizabeth Cotton, who's a wonderful folk musician, and it's for kids, and they buy that, because it's like, you can't stream a book. You can, you can get a book on Kindle, but I think children's book is an art form that people are always going to want to hold on to. Speaking of which, the artwork um, that you have had in your past records and, and in your book are, is amazing. Such a great community of people you seem to draw from. And thank you. Portland yeah. seems to be just flourishing with Portland so many is, great artists of all kinds. Yeah, great photographers, great artists. Um, and in the case of that children's book, it was Tatiana Fazlalizade, who lives in New York, who's a wonderful political artist. And this was her first children's book, and she did a great job with it. She did. Well, Laura, the new album, The Lookout, is amazing. I'd love to hear more from it. All right, thanks. I get tuned up. Laura Veers live on KEXP. Who's ready? Yeah. <laughs>
Beautiful. Laura Veer is live on KEXP. Laura, can you introduce your band? Sure. We've got Matt Berger on the drums, Alex Guy on viola and violin, and Eli Moore on bass and guitar. You sound wonderful. And you actually had a few guests helping you out on this record. Can yes. you talk about that? Yes. We had Sufjan Stevens on a song called Watchfire, who um, has been a friend for a long time but never has sung on anything that I've done. And then um, Jim James is another one from My Morning Jacket who sang on a few tracks, and he's been on a few of my records, and, and others as well. That sounds like a lot of fun. It was fun. Are you going to do that song, uh, Watchfire, now? Yes.
Laura Veers live in the KEXP studios, the new album, The Lookout. That sounded great. Thank you so much for coming by. Thanks for having us, Cheryl. It's always great to see you. You too. You've got a tune to KEXP Seattle. Discover new music at kexp.org.